I was actually like very mm. shocked to hear Savon arrive at this conclusion. I, Savon, right. I love you. I fuck with you. But when, when he said, when he made the distinction between rapper and human being, I was like, yo, this nigga Savon is growing up. Like, yo, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's growing, growing up. up on us. Yeah, look yeah. at him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at growth. Look at development because that's, <laughs> that's immediately what Port Antonio. Right. Made me do is like yes, J Cole is a rapper who I love, one of my favorites of all time. Mm -hmm. But this became more than just rap; like it, it's involving human beings, human emotions, human feelings, relationships, friendships, all that stuff. It's just being broadcasted to the world. And so, yeah, as a rapper, yes, he he should have. I mean, he he stepped out and and put put a track out, and then he pulled it back. Like that's what he should have right. done. But as a human being, I. Don't, if I don't want to say these things about my friend, then I'm I'm not gonna do it. Like, and even if I'm pressured to, like, yeah, yeah. So I I I think it showed a lot in terms of his ability as a man to hear hear all the noise and right. and he and he admitted he was pressured. Like, so seven minute drill came from a level of pressure he felt around came him from the like, homies. Yeah, but to through. to do that and two days later to come back and be like, you know what? That that wasn't me, and I hear all the noise. I know the world wants blood. I, I'm ignoring what these millions of people are telling me to do, and I'm doing what I want to do. Like mm -hmm. right. that, there is a there is a level of maturity and peace in that that I think if now that we're months removed from it, I can see it and I can appreciate it. Um, okay, so I yeah, can that's, identify. That's where I'm at. I can identify with the human thing, right? I think both you and Savon are because I watched you guys on Stay Busy, of course. And I think Joe was there on that episode, correct? Was that the Joe? Uh, episode? Kojo, yeah. Kojo was on that, right? Shout yeah. out to Kojo. Shout out to Stay Busy Podcast. Shout out to Will. Um, I definitely understand the human point that you were making, right? And honestly, I understood when Savon said it as well. I guess for me, I was just a little blinded because like you said, we are rap fans. So the question I posed for the both of you guys before we head out of here is, how do we sway fans into knowing who is the best? Because... For years now, it's always unfortunately been due to battles, right? Mm -hmm. Them going head to head. And so, then someone wins, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that why I was that's why it was always so hard for me to just put all of the blame on the fans or his circle. Like, yo, y'all made him do it. It was like, yeah, I, I I get it, but that has always been the moniker, you know, to go off of who's the best or who's great. Like, what needs to be done now? How how does that look? How do we transform a, a fan's mindset into thinking that way or uh, into another way? I just feel like this is such a cop out answer, but I feel like how would we ever even like have that answer anyway? Though, like, yeah, if there was a big, big, big battle, like like the one that we just witnessed, right. and let's say Kendrick unanimously won. But there will always be such a huge population that still is like, no, Drake is the best rapper we've ever seen. Or, you know, J. Cole, but technically, he tech, on a technical level, he's the best spitter. Like, he has the best bars. He has the best pen. Right. So we'll never, ever, mm. as a society, arrive at, like, a, a distinct answer. So I just don't know if there's a way we can do this. Decide but I, I do yeah. think there's, like, a compelling case, obviously, <clears throat> that Kendrick Lamar is the best of all time. Yeah. Very compelling case. But... Like who who's gonna who, like who's gonna decide like yes, this is the factual best person? Like will we ever get that is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's there's no metric. Know. Music is an opinion based, subjective game. People decide that for themselves. And even if they're like you said before, even if there is a consensus, that doesn't make them right just because a million people agree. Like a, a million people could tell me, yo, the the sky is green. I'm looking at the sky. I'm, I'm seeing yes. blue, blue. <laughs> right. but, but a million right. people say the sky is green. That, 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 does that make it right? Like, right. There's, there's no metric in music. The only thing that is quantified are the amount of, of award, awards people get and sales. But we know that's like right. that's more about the, the business, business of music than the actual skill of it. So there's nothing. There's no closure. There's no finality. Right. It's like, just literally, I listen to this thing. I think he sounds better than him. That's my opinion. If I want to debate it, I'll debate it. But and, and even if you win a music debate, that still doesn't decide anything because no. people feel how they feel. So, yeah, I, I accepted it years ago. Like I who I think is the best is who I think is the best. And I'm, I'm secure in that. And I'm willing to speak to people who feel differently about it. But there's no way for me to prove I'm right or prove that you're wrong. 
right. don't know because there, there's so many different factors like even but there's always something that counters it because for example a really big thing that does matter is your streams like your streaming numbers how many people are actually listening to you and drake is always at the top of that but then always the counter argument some drake haters no yeah, some Drake hater is like, oh, well, McDonald's sells the most burgers in the world. That doesn't mean he's the best. So there's just <laughs> never going to be like, I just feel like I just feel like we're going to be debating this forever. That's my answer. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> tough. I, I definitely understand what you guys are coming from. Like, with, again, with sports, it can be quantified, right? Uh, mm -hmm. This person has X amount of Super Bowls. This person has X amount of NBA rings. I heard you guys say this on Stay Busy as well. I love yeah. that point. That was a beautiful point. Yeah, I guess in music. The only precursor we've ever had is head to head competition. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why this gets, you know, the learns, the lines get so blurred with this because it's like we don't have a definite metric to actually define. All right. You did this. All right. Your record went X times platinum. All right. This person's record went X times platinum as well. Like, mm -hmm. what is the real way to really justify it? So. I can understand that. I can understand. I think just for rap fans, and I just want to speak for rap fans, it's just always been head to head competition to determine a winner of like who that's we, how you decide. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, yeah. right. And I yeah. would love to see it develop into something else. You know, maybe there are new ways we could show that, but unfortunately, it's always been that in rap. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think a lot of rap mindsets whether it's from the older generation or even people right. in our generation like i do think things are a little out outdated but I because agree. they're so ingrained in the culture it'll take a lot to change the way people look at things like so yeah i i, I think for the next couple of decades like we'll still look at head-to-head -head combat as being the way to decide something but it's like okay you might have beat me in this battle but at any time like we jump on a track together i have the better verse i have more hits right. like does right. that really mean you're you're better than me? Like, mm -hmm. right, right. So, or am I playing in for the business? Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. This has been a great, great, great Aww, conversation. Look at us. We got into such life thing. I just need to, <laughs> you know, before we say our farewells, you know, what I love about well, the fact that we're all potters, we I feel like we could speak about our feelings and stuff a lot. Yeah. And me and Armand specifically, we're always very like we could share everything that's on our mind. So. I just want to bid you farewell with <clears throat> this. So I feel like, um, how do I explain it? Like I've been noticing what had, well, I'm sure you guys notice even more than me, but the intersection between hip hop and the WWE right now mm -hmm. is like so crazy. Like, it's, it's like, it's like, do you guys see this? Like, it's, it's like, it's like Cardi, sexy, right? Like, it's just such. Like it's happening right now. Something crazy is happening right now. And Armand is that guy that is yes. like literally the person to go for this. Like literally hip hop and the WWE expert. Like, I feel like you're the best one doing it right now. So thank you. I just want you to realize like something is very exciting that's happening for you in your career because you're you're smack dab in the middle of it. Like yes. it would be like if they needed someone who was like an expert on hot ones and J. Cole. And they're like, it's Regina. <laughs> it's Regina. Regina. Like, it's so specific. So Armand yeah, is really that yeah. guy right now. I know you guys yeah, listening thanks. to this know him already, but please check out everything that he's doing. Please. So, Cause he's, he's going to be, you know, chosen for something real quick. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. It was, it was cool hearing, hearing y'all, y'all talk about it on the show too. Cause I know like anytime I come around, Alex and Savon are like, yo, Armand wrestling. Let's talk about our favorite wrestlers from. <laughs> days, like that. So it's yeah. it's becoming something that all these podcasts can't ignore. Like can't. months yeah. ago, I'm hearing Joe Budden and Flip talk about WrestleMania. I'm like, yeah. Joe Joe was into wrestling. You would yeah. never know because yeah. people people hide their hide their enjoyment of it for whatever right. reason. But it's becoming undeniable. So yeah, man, it's it's great to be part of this era. It's great to be a voice in this yeah. era. Yeah. Um and. Of course, get the opportunities that I have, and um. So yeah, th thank y'all for the flowers. I think uh, it was like a couple months ago. You guys compared me to Peter Rosenberg. I was like, damn, that's yes, that's, no, uh, especially for our generation. That's really how we view you. There has to be a bridge into different industries constantly. Mm -hmm. So it's good to sure. see that you're the face of this one, brother. Yeah, and you're like, you don't have to like. Now that people see the wave, they're like yeah. trying to jump on it. You don't have to catch mm -hmm. up. Like you've been, like you have a been very good relationship with you know the people that give you those opportunities and. You've yeah. been a hip hop journalist for years, so yeah. it's pretty cool to witness. It is. I think we're manifesting something. Ah. Yeah, 
<laughs> please, please pray for me. Need to know yes. family, Patreon on, listeners. Pray for me. <laughs> we got this. We got this. Well, look, Armand, you could come up whenever else you would like to. You know, you are family here on the Need to Know podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Savon, we love you in spirit. <laughs> Damn, we just went, we went going and stuff like that. Anyway, this has been a Need to Know podcast exclusively on Patreon. Don't forget to leave comments and share how you feel in the comments. We love you all. Take care. Goodbye.